Hey everybody, welcome back to another Diecast review. As you can see, the Daytona 500 champion car is in. Austin Dillon, that number three. Uh, dumped, no, I shouldn't say dumped. He got into the back of Eric Almirola on the last lap. It was not an intentional spin, uh, but he did get into him, there's no doubt. Um, it was not a, I'm going to wreck him, it was I'm going to push him because I'm not letting off the gas, it's the last lap, and then he happened to get turned loose. So, uh, not a fan of that, but... I mean, what are you going to do with say 2500? I, I wouldn't lift either. So it's not like Austin Dillon did something I wouldn't. But I hate to see a, a race end like that. So uh, anyway, Austin Dillon, number three, Daytona 500 win. Uh, Elite, one of 743. This car comes with your favorite new Elite card that means nothing. No information on there is valuable or useful in any way, shape, or form. But it's there. And winner card, Austin Dillon, Daytona 500 champion. Led one lap and won by two tenths of a second over Bubba Wallace, who was run into the wall by a flat tire on Denny Hamlin's car. It was flat. I did go back and watch a video of an onboard, and it, it did blow, but everyone still doesn't care about Denny Hamlin. So <laughs> uh, there's a confetti, a little bag that comes with it, and also the winner sticker there. Nice little Monster Energy green winner sticker. So let's get on to the die cast, the best part. Um, so if any of you follows, uh, any of the diecast channels, uh, or pages on Twitter or Facebook, they showed a, or even the fix, um, from Lionel, they had a, uh, prototype of this car and the fade was wrong. The red went all the way back, like all the way back to like here, it's way back there. So that was all red and then it didn't start to fade and it was wrong. And I immediately was just like, you gotta be kidding me. They're going to screw up a fade again and absolutely you know, butcher a Daytona 500 car. And um, much to my surprise, they didn't. They actually did it right this time. Uh, with the Kyle Larson issues they've had in the past, I didn't really expect them to fix it, and they did. So props there. Um, the car looks great, top to bottom. So down the left side, we got that kind of carbon fibery looking red here. Uh, confetti all up and down. I mean, you got it all over this side of the hood, a little bit on the side. Then you get to that number three. You see a couple of little door dings there. Uh, and then it turns all black and that nice fade there and it is right after three they did that correct Austin Dillon winner sticker and the American flag uh, there's all the confetti then kind of pasted back on the rear here um, you can see on the tire there's a couple little pieces of confetti uh, a little bit of a corner panel moved out there or kind of shaved out there for burnout and then American ethanol ring he also so that was the other thing he got out of the car after celebrating and dabbed and that immediately made me lose all faith in humanity. I mean, luckily it came back with Bubba Wallace's interview, but Austin Dillon, if you are forever, whatever reason, watching this ridiculous review of a diecast, which he's got a lot better things to do, but if he ever watched it, please don't dab again. It is just, uh, I, I, the dab to me is, is completely ridiculous. I don't understand why it's such a marquee thing for people. Uh, anyway, now that my little rant over the da the dab is over, uh, Dow, Dow, Chevy Camaro ZL1, um, confetti, uh, we got DIN 553, and then inside there's our fuel cell. On to the right side, uh, as you can see, got a little bit of marking up here. Not sure what that's from or for. If that's, it's not paint. Um, it is definitely part of the vehicle. I'm just not really sure what. Oh, well, maybe it is paint. I don't know. I'm curious now. It looks like it's some kind of marking from maybe getting in the wall. Looks like he got in the wall a little bit. And maybe that's where that kind of came from. But, uh, yeah, you can see it a little bit there, too. Um, definitely some markings there, though. Uh, but anyway, down the rest of the right side, we got uh, number three. Uh, not a lot of confetti hit the right side. so all kind of on the left. But a little bit of marking there. Monster Energy Cup Series. Austin Dillon up there. On to the front. There is our Camaro front end, and actually it looks great, because most of the Camaros are really clean, and you don't get to see them kind of raced up in the front like this. But that's a raced front end. You got tape, you got a piece of bare bond in the grill, it looks like. Um, confetti all up on the left, on the right side, but the Camaro front end looks nice. Uh, I wish it was a little lower, um, you know, kind of more like that, as far as low to the ground. But, uh, you know, it'll it'll get there at some point. They'll, they'll figure out a way. Uh, Monster Energy on the banner here. Onto the roof, we got the escape hatch antennas, and there is the hood opening 
or the roof flap there. Another one there. I'm not going to tip it in case I drop my antenna, though. Um, and there you see it. I mean, we got that confetti there on that set and the confetti there. That's kind of the main two patches of confetti. Underneath, there's the detail for the undercarriage and the working rear suspension. Um, and, again, for all the people who say that this year's Elite is just a copy of last year's ARC, they are not referring to engine detail. The engine detail is very, very different and is definitely better on this year's Elite because uh, it was just a plastic block last year. But anyway, under the hood, um, not as good as last year's Elite. It is the same motor. They are just missing the hoses and the spark plugs. So there's a hose that goes from there to the radiator and spark plugs, wires that run down at the bottom. Those are not in there. So, um, again, it would be better, but it at least is a legitimate-looking engine versus, you know, a plastic block that's just thrown in it. So, um I'm a fan. I do like this year's Elite. Again, last year's Elite is obviously better, but that cost difference of 105 versus 85, that is a that is a nice difference. I've gotten a few more Elites this year that I normally wouldn't have gotten, uh, partially because I hate the ARCs, but also mainly because they're more affordable. So I will say, not a fan of the ARCs at all. I think they feel like cheap cardboard. I don't know. Just they don't feel right. And then um, definitely a big fan of the of the Elites, though. So... Uh, anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun jazz. Um, really appreciate it. Had a lot of a lot of fun doing these. Uh, I'm gonna keep going. I've got at least uh, ten more. Uh, we're somewhere around, I think, ten more to do. Uh, I've already done a couple, so uh, got a lot of reviews coming out here. They're all gonna be a lot of fun. So, um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, uh, share it around. It's uh, definitely helpful. Uh, gotten channels growing, so. When we get to 500, I'll do that whole collection video. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but when I get to it, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, Anyway, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next Diecast Review.